Hello everyone, it's you here, and welcome back to the History of Everything podcast YouTube channel. I am currently sitting here freezing in my garage because it is negative three degrees Fahrenheit here right now, uh, or for anyone who is in Europe that might be watching this, it is around negative 19 degrees Celsius. It is rather cold. But here I am today to want to talk to you all, to tell you a story of Christmas traditions, something that is not quite a dumb events in history, more so a cool and entertaining little thing, a story, if you will, something that I really do love and wanted to share with you all. I just wanted to tell you all before we start this whole thing that I want to thank you. Thank you each and every single one of you who has been here with me for this entire journey on my main channel of the Saku You One, which is the gaming one, to here on the history page, to the podcast, to TikTok, to Twitch, to everything. Thank you to each and every one of you. And I really do hope that you have a very merry and happy Christmas. And even if it's not a great one, I hope that wherever you are in this world, that things get better for you. And on that note, what I wanted to talk to you about were some very fun Christmas traditions, or uh, uh, I did a, a bigger one on this on multiple that are going up for my patrons on Patreon. But I wanted to tell you all a rather fun and entertaining one that I, I really find amusing. See, the thing is, here in the United States, we have so many different traditions that surround Christmas, things that are stereotypical for us at this point. You know, you have the tree that you hang up and decorate, presents under the Christmas tree for all the children, baking cookies, the traditions of Santa Claus and the reindeer, etc. But the thing about Christmas is that in many places all around the world, there are all kinds of different traditions that are associated with it, some being secular, some that are not. It really depends on the time and place of wherever it is that you are. So today, I wanted to tell you about my favorite new tradition that I have learned about that is just absolutely hilarious in my opinion. That being the Yuletide Goat of Sweden. Now, for anyone who has not heard of this thing before, the Yule Goat is something that has been a Swedish Christmas symbol that dates back all the way to when there were still pagan festivals. But of course, that is just the regular Yule Goat. It's not the giant one that we are talking about now. In 1966, that tradition got a kind of whole new life when someone came up with the idea to turn this into a giant straw goat, something that is now referred to as the Yavla goat. According to the official website, this goat is more than 42 feet high. It's 23 feet wide, and it weighs 3.6 tons. Every single year, this massive goat is constructed in the same spot, and fans can even go and watch live streams from the first Sunday of Advent until after the new year when it gets taken down. And then, what people do after it's put up is they wait or take bets to see how long it's going to take for someone to destroy it. And no, I'm not kidding. That is something that has become a little bit of a tradition itself, much to the annoyance of a number of people. But before we get into that whole story, we have to talk about the Yule Goat itself and why this is a thing. You see, for hundreds of years, people in Northern Europe would have these big festivals in December, these festivals being known as Yule. And then these traditions became part of Christmas celebrations in places like Sweden, with one of the traditions being the idea of the Yule Goat. In some stories, what would happen is that Christmas elves would ride the Yule Goat door to door and deliver gifts to sleeping children, just like Santa Claus does today. In fact, it's because of this that Yule goats, like little straw versions of them, are actually one of the most popular traditions for like Christmas decorations in Sweden. But all right, these are the little decorations. What about the big one? What about this giant goat that everyone wants to hear about? Well, in 1966, you had the town of Yavla that really wanted something fun and Christmassy for the town square. And a giant Yule goat really seemed like a good idea, except it really wasn't. It wasn't great that this giant statue that they were making was made of super flammable straw. But still, that first Yavla goat actually made it all the way to New Year's Eve before being burned down. The bad part about all this is that the majority of the other goats have not been so lucky. In like the past 50-something years, at least 35 of those goats ended up getting destroyed. So let's go ahead and list off some of those. In 1969, after two years of being untouched, the goat was burnt to the ground on New Year's Eve, which I guess is a good way to end the year. In 1970, the very next year, the Yavla goat was torched very quickly. How quickly, you might wonder? Well, it was within six hours of the entire thing being staged. 
This then forced them to go and have to replace it with a new goat that was made out of reeds. In 1971, the people who had been making the previous goats of the earlier years were so annoyed with their goats getting burned down that they just quit. And this resulted in the Natural Science Society of Vasaskolin deciding to pick up the mantle and make a smaller goat. That smaller goat then ended up getting smashed to pieces. The next year, in 1972, a person sabotaged the creation of the goat. They somehow managed to get the thing to implode. The identity of the person that did this actually still remains a mystery to this day. We don't know what happened. And then the next year, in 1973, some dude just went and stole the entire goat and moved it to his backyard. Naturally speaking, because this is a gigantic straw statue, he was very quickly found, arrested for aggravated robbery, and then had to spend the next two years in prison. And this is like every single year this is happening right as the thing is being launched, right? The town has tried many different ways over the years in order to protect their goat. They've had guards stationed, they've put up security cameras, they've raised fences, and the goat itself has been multiple times sprayed with water as well as flame-proof chemicals. Some year, the goat does even manage to survive the whole holiday season, but most of the years, it does not. In 2005, there was a group that went in dressed as Santa as well as gingerbread men that fired flaming arrows into the goat. Hackers in 2009 went and disabled the security cameras and then set the goat on fire. If we go back a little bit earlier in 2001, there was an American tourist that had been staying there in Sweden. He was told by his Swedish friends there that burning down the goat was something that was good and that he was supposed to do. So he did it, got arrested, and then had to spend the next two weeks in jail. Talk about having some really shitty friends playing a prank on you. And over the years, this just became more and more and more common. In 2016, it was the 50th anniversary of the first Yule Goat. On November 27th, the statue of the goat was unveiled, and by that very same night, it was on fire. But really, the funny thing is, is that it is not always fire that ends up getting the goat. In 1976, someone went and drove a car into the back legs of the statue, which caused it to collapse. Then in 2010, there was a security guard who was guarding the goat that reported that he was being offered a bribe by men who were hoping to take the statue. The plan of these two men, what it is that they thought they were going to do, was apparently bring in a helicopter and then just take it. Just, just like take the whole thing. I don't really know how they anticipated they were going to do this considering that the statue did weigh 3.6 tons, but hey, I guess props to them for innovation. The guard ended up turning down the bribe, so that was never something that was attempted, though I would have loved to see the recorded uh, footage of that, gotta say. So really, at the end of all this, we have to ask ourselves, why does this keep happening? Why does the town keep on building this goat? What is going on? And the short of it is that the town is really stubborn and wants to continue with their tradition, and also people theorize that they just, uh, they really like the attention that it brings them. Over the years, the town has been told time and time again to stop building the goat, or at the very least, to stop using the traditional straw. But the reality is, people are very proud of their Yule goat. It's been in the Guinness Book of World Records for its size. And every season, hundreds if not thousands upon thousands of people go and visit the goat in order to take part in Yule celebrations. Part of the reason that people come is specifically to see how long that goat is actually going to last. And as a result of that, for the tourism industry of the town, it's a welcome thing. It brings in an influx of cash that keeps things going. Surprisingly, after that point in 2016, the Yuletide goat was actually left alone for a good five years. And then in 2021, that whole streak uh, ended when it was burnt to the ground again. Which, at the very end, leaves us with a final question. What about this year? It is December 24th right now as I'm recording this in my garage, and the thing is, as of December 23rd, when I was doing the research for this video, the Yule Goat is still there. Whether or not it's going to last for Christmas, or maybe in the process of me literally recording this or editing this video, the whole thing is going to get burnt down. I really don't know. But if it does happen, then yeah, I will make a video on that and I will put it out. Probably as a short or something, considering that it would just be a little bit of an update. But my friends, that is the story of the Yule Goat and the very interesting Christmas tradition of a part of Sweden. I hope that you all really enjoyed today's episode. I thank you, each and every one of you who has stuck around here with me to the end. I don't know how many people necessarily sit through all the videos here. I don't know how many people are set to get notifications when my videos go up. 
but it really does mean the world to me that a lot of you are here and enjoy listening to the stories that I have to tell. Because I love sharing this stuff. I love sharing with all of you. And I'm hoping that as the channel grows, that I will be able to put in more time, more effort, more things that will make this channel better and higher quality. Perhaps better storytelling techniques, maybe that comes from me, but also better animation and videos and other stuff that goes with it so that uh, more people stick around to the end. Thank you, all of you, for watching. I hope you have a very Merry Christmas. I hope that you all, if you are in a rough patch in your life, that it gets better for you. And I wish you the best of luck. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Have a good rest of your day. And goodbye, guys. Merry Christmas.